Welcome. In this lesson, we will learn about I2C communication protocol, which is quite popular when integrating different sensors to the microcontrollers. To be specific, we will learn how to communicate with the following IMU sensor using HAL API. But first, I want to provide you with um, introduction of I2C uh, protocol, so you have better understanding how it operates. The main advantage of using I2C protocol is having only two lines. So we have serial data and the serial clock lines. Using these two lines, we can connect as many slaves, as many sensors to the master, to the microcontroller, let's say. Uh, so imagine having 20 sensors and we can read all 20 sensors uh, using just two lines. It's also worth mentioning that these two lines are high by default because of these pull-up resistors. When the master wants to initiate a communication, it first sends a start condition when SDA line goes low, when clock line is high. Um, at this time instance, all the slaves wake, wake, wake up and uh, they will listen to the master. In a similar way, the master can uh, terminate the communication by sending stop condition when SDA line goes high, when clock line is high. These are only two cases when it is allowed to change the state of the SDA when clock line is high. In other cases, it is uh, prohibited to, to change the state of the SDA when clock line is high. But we don't need to worry much about that because the microcontroller will deal with all of these details. After sending start condition, the master will send the address of the device it wants to communicate with. Address is uh, just uh, seven bits. So in this specific example, we have the following address. Uh, so the slave will sample data when clock line is high. So we have zero, we have one, we have one, we have zero, zero, one, and zero. So we have the following address. After se sending these seven bits, we have another bit uh, that will be sent by the master, which is read write uh, bit. So if this bit is one, it means that uh, master wants to read some data from the slave. If this uh, bit is zero, it means that the master wants to send some data to the slave. After that, if a device with this address exists on, on, a, on the bus, it will acknowledge the master by sending zero. So we have acknowledge. If this bit is one, it means that we have not acknowledge, meaning that there's no uh, device uh, with, with this address connected to the I2C bus. So let me show how we can write and read um, data through I2C protocol. So let's start from writing data to the I2C device. Um, so we have start uh, condition, then we have address, then we have zero as read uh, write bit as, as we discussed. After that, the slave will acknowledge um, then the master can send data to the slave. So this data is one byte or eight bits in other words. After sending one byte, the device, the slave has to acknowledge the master that it receives this data. So we have acknowledge. After that, the, micro, the master can send another data or it can stop the transaction by sending stop condition. Reading uh, data from the device from the slave works in a similar way. So we have start condition, then we have address um, sent by the master, then we have one as a read write bit. Then the, the slave will acknowledge. After that, it will immediately start sending data. After uh, every data, the master has to acknowledge the slave that it received this data. When, when the master wants to stop 
the transaction of data, uh, the, the master will send not acknowledge bit uh, to the slave. After that, it will stop by stop condition. But you have to understand that I2C ha devices ha might have many measurements. If we uh, open the register map uh, and the descriptions of the IMU sensor that we want to work with, uh, we have a different measurements. We have accelerometer measurements, we have temperature measurements, we have gyroscope measurements, and we might access to other things. It means that the master, the microcontroller, has to specify which measurements it uh, want to receive or it want to uh, get an access. Uh, for that purpose, it has to specify the register. So if we want to get an access to accelerometer measurements, we have to specify that we want to read these registers in this range. In that case, we have to work in a following way. If the master wants to write some data to the specific register, it has to follow the following steps. First, it's, it sends start condition, address, and the zero as read write bit, uh, which is quite uh, obvious. Then we have acknowledge from the slave. After that, the master has to send a register it want to get an access. Then we have, of course, acknowledge from the slave. Then the master can send data. So this data will be written to this register. Also, it's worth mentioning that most I2C devices support sequential write and the sequential read. So if we send another data to the slave, this data will be written a register which is located just before uh, the register that we specified at the beginning. So if we uh, write this data to register 5, and if we send another data, it will be written to register 6. So we can send another data, it will be stored in register 7, and so on. So we can write data to the registers that are sequentially located using this procedure. Reading data from the register is a little bit complicated because we have to specify uh, which register we want to read. So we have to send some data to the slave. At the same time, we, we want to read some data. So we, we have the combination of reading and writing from the slave. Uh, it works in a following way. We have... Um, start condition of course then we have address and the zero as read write bit meaning that we want to we want to send uh, the register that we want to read so we have acknowledge after that then we send register the master will send the register uh, it wants to read then we have acknowledge after that uh, the microcontroller the master has to send a repeated start Repeated start is, is the same as a start condition, but it happens uh, during the tran transaction of data. Then we send address of the device again. Then we send one as a read write bit, meaning that we want to read some data from the slave. Then we have acknowledge from the uh, slave, from the sensor. Then we have data uh, to be sent by the slave, by the device. So this data is from the register that we sent uh, before the repeated start condition. Uh, so, uh, so this data will be from this specific register. Uh, after that, the master, the microcontroller usually sends acknowledge. If the I2C uh, device supports sequential read, it will continue sending us data, but uh, from the registers that are uh, located just before this register. So imagine that we uh, read uh, register 5, so this data will be from register 5, and if the microcontroller sends acknowledge, uh, the next data will be 
from register 6. So we can continue in that way if the microcontroller sends acknowledge bit. So we might have uh, data from register 5, then we have register 6 and the 7 and so on. And finally, if the microcontroller wants to stop the transaction of data, the master, the microcontroller will send uh, not acknowledge condition, then it stops by stop condition. So this was a quick introduction how I2C uh, protocol operates, but we don't need to worry much about details when using HAL API we, because we will have uh, high abstraction functions that we will use to work with I2C protocol.